Here I have a $1 Lego castle. Much like me, it's inadequate and a little sticky. Why would he be sticky? This is a $1,000 castle, and it's much more like my roommate. Far overpriced. Starting at $1, I'll be incrementally creating medieval builds, climaxing... Oh, that's why. ...with a Mega Man castle. Building Lego isn't that tough, but that's where we introduce the challenge. challenge. I have to have a rule set that I can't deviate from, so I'm only going to be using the parts from these four sets. That's less than 5,000 pieces, plus whatever else I might want to use along the way. Starting with the least castle thing on this list. Being the cheapest thing on here, it only takes two parts. Unfortunately, the only magical thing about this is that I can't remember if this is a build I did or something that was already in the instructions. Since their introductions, tanks have changed the landscape of war. They're quite powerful. I didn't, I didn't build a tank. This is a medieval video, not... A, a tank video, but I did build something that looks like something that would stop a tank. Uh, instead, it's meant to stop troops. It, it's a barricade. I, I made a barricade. Backpacks are pretty useful. Even the troops have to get their supplies from one place to another, and LEGO did that themselves. They used some less than appropriate pieces. This one looks a little bit too modern and space age for me, so that's why I tried my own, and it uh, isn't very good. These guys can't even stand up by themselves, mine or the official version. Being brick built, they are a pretty good representation of a bird and the, the falcon's namesake. That was like six months ago when I started recording this video before they released an actual molded black falcon, which looks way better. I didn't even design this one anyway, so I probably should just cross it out. Lego did make a chair for their own set, but it's more of a throne and not every peasant fighting on the front lines is going to have one when they're kicking up their feet back at home, so a cheaper option would be more appropriate for sitting. Tootsies have to stay toasty if we're going to have an effective garrison defending the castle walls. A fireplace makes only the most sense. Despite a lot of weirdos' attempts, we still eat meat, and I would like that around in non-human form, whether it be chicken, or water chicken, or black chicken. It's real. It, it's a thing. Using only three pieces, you can easily recreate this torch from the set. Uh, would this cost a dollar to make? Probably not, but it's less than a dollar, so it counts. These are just boxes to hold stuff. I didn't really do much here. For our first $5 build, we have the aptly named Fortress Polybag, which it, it doesn't, it's not really looking like much of a fortress. What is, what is the definition of fortress? A military stronghold. Technically speaking, it is a fortress, but not a very good one. Any invading troops could just run right up to your defenders and whack them right on the head. That's why it comes with the catapult. Using only seven pieces, one of them being a normal frying pan, this could be a $1 build by itself. But what takes it over the top is the fact that it flings poop. That looks like something lit on fire. That looks like coal or maybe a rock. And that is poop, flaming poop. We're launching flaming poop at our enemies. That counts, that counts. Now there's not a chance that they can even get close to attacking. And hey, if showing a bunch of different builds I personally didn't design doesn't put you off, feel free to please, please subscribe. $5 build is pretty irrelevant when you have three $5 builds. A $15 build, 15, uh, we have a trebuchet. Being one of the alternate builds from the set, it is pretty neat. You can wind it back and actually let it fire, but the projectiles you're launching are pretty small because the bucket that you're launching from, small. Despite how big a $500 castle end up being, this trebuchet probably isn't gonna fit. And I still wanna have it a part of it, so I tried using something I saw when playing an old video game, Age of Empires 2, having a mobile version of a trebuchet where it can pack up and be carted out. It's not, it's not very, I tried. Is this a $15 build? I'm not quite sure. It came in a big set, which doesn't help me narrow that down, but it still looks cool, and it looks good in a caravan. LEGO has made a lot of different dragons before, most of them looking really good, but when you compare this dragon to most other dragons, it doesn't look very good. For being a $10 build, there is some pretty clever parts usage in here, like leaves for ears. Because they're brick built, you can reproduce and have a small little force. And say it with me, class, no matter how bad something looks, it, it looks, looks great, great in, in mass. mass. It looks great in the ass. <laughs> Oftentimes in life, we have to admit to ourselves that we're just not the best at whatever it is that we're doing. And in this case, I'm not the best at m making money. But my friend Shy, on the other hand, is. And his army is a prime example of that. Being comprised of... <sighs> thousands of minifigures. It is holy... It's a lot. It, it is, it's, it's, concer it's a little concerning. And in the medieval times, when you were a small force, you had to give a little bit to the bigger guy so they didn't come and kill you. So that's, uh, that's why in this universe sent some minifigures to Shy, and that's why he, in return, is going to show the next build. So I have this elephant, made it a carriage or howdah, did I say that right? Howda. And added two black falcons. 
I think this weaponized elephant looks cool. But you know what would be better? Six more. You know what would be better than that? 14 weaponized elephants in this 1100 Black Falcon army and castle. Our $50 barn is the fourth set we're gonna use for parts for our giant castle here at the end. And it's a barn. Think of something else to say. Don't make a farm animal sound. Don't moo like a cow. Moo. Damn it. Finally, at our $100 tier, we have our first castle that doesn't look like flaming crap. And it, it, it it's a castle, it, it has walls and, and a gate and other defining features that make it a castle. And it, it is good, it is, it is a good castle, I like it. But this, I, I, it's not my build. Actually, most of the things in this video so far haven't been my build. The parts that make up this set are pretty good, especially if you're trying to make a castle, of which I'm doing right now. Making this, I wanted to add a little bit of an extra challenge as well as some parameters so I had an idea of where to go with the build. Introducing the rock of challenge. Despite this thing being as big as it is, the only viable place to stack bricks is on this 10 stud by 10 stud base, drastically shrinking our options. My thought was to make some sort of lookout tower for enemy vessels not too far off the coast. Whatever watchmen stationed here would have to be on the lookout for a good while. That's why the base level needed to store plenty of provisions until the next guard change. I used the second level for an eating area, using the chairs and fireplace from earlier so they have a place to cook and rest. And for tonight's dinner, lamb chops. Being positioned in an isolated tower for so long, the guardsmen would need a place to sleep. I also thought this spot would work quite well as a cat ammunition production facility. At this point, I wasn't sure if I should finish off with the watchtower or cap it off with a seemingly more practical lighthouse. Asking Instagram for input, looking for some feedback. Do I go with the aviary watchtower look or do I go with the unfinished lighthouse look? Both don't look great, both are bad. I should probably do something else with my- Only further validated my choice. Guess I can at least use the unfinished room as a, I don't know, a pencil holder? After seeing the Black Falcon bird build, I really wanted an aviary. And having a tower completely surrounded by water seemed like an efficient and the only means of communication with land. Fun part about having different levels is I can swap them around to have a few different versions. The final build, it, it's fine, it's okay. I really like the face that I gave the drawbridge. It even has a little beard, making it look like it can eat no, some people. The reason why this is considered a three-in-one is because you have three different options to build from the set. The first one being a pretty damn good looking castle. The second one being a castle tower for, for a mage, a mage's tower. And the third most important part of any castle ever, the bakery. All of these things can be built from this, but to build them all at the same time requires three sets. And all in all, the three of them together don't look very good. Which means spending $300 on this is... It, it, it's a little, it's a little silly. Now for the big boy, I wanted to add an extra challenge, as well as some parameters, so I had an idea of where to go with the build. Introducing the rock of slightly increased challenge. I had this base plate on my mind for a really long time. After once hearing someone say, this is the most useless Lego part, this thing might not be the worst piece, but it is definitely a B to work around. There were not one, not two, but four specific spots that go completely unused. This thing was a mess to figure out. I started with the wall to have an idea of how big the perimeter would be. The base plate itself was not wide enough in the front, but I could spread it out with a few of these. I use this build technique in the back where if you place one brick, then one cylinder and repeat that, you can build a bendable wall that allowed me to follow the shape of the back steps pretty smoothly. Once I had the outlines established, I started on the buildings with the first one being the barracks where the men and their crap is stored. The whole space was very tight, so the barracks had to connect to the center gatehouse. Because the entryway was so narrow, I couldn't have a large gate, but the two iron doors would be more than enough, especially since I put a dozen different holes to kill anyone unfortunate enough to get stuck in the entrance. The keep in the back houses a few different purposes. At the base is the blacksmith's forge. The first floor holds a dining area and two separate rooms that were built onto the walls. The smaller of the two being a modern bathroom with brand new amenities. Although that does seem like a monumental waste of perfectly good crap that we could be launching out of catapults. If you move the table and carpet from the center of the room, there's a secret escape hatch out of the keep. It wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for someone trying to flee to plunge right into the ocean. So a small foldable boat is hidden away underneath for anyone to make a speedy withdrawal. The Lord of Fort Port, it's a port that's also a fort, the name makes sense, sleeps in his room on the second floor. And right above him is the recycled lighthouse from earlier. I don't wanna make the courtyard feel any more cramped than it already was, so all I put there was a well, which worked out pretty well. The rear gatehouse is pretty simple. Some guards can be stationed on top and it houses the drawbridge. Despite its name, Fort Port is still a castle and a castle isn't built on water without any thought behind it. That's why when the drawbridge is lowered, it connects and expands the port where ships dock and goods are moved. With my parts rapidly dwindling, I made some defensive towers with ballista mounted on top and a few other decorative elements so it wasn't just so white. 
you were doing the math as you were watching this video, you might have noticed that the castle itself only cost around $500 to build. So where does the other 500 come from? Well, a castle is only as good as the men that defend it, and we need minifigures to populate it. Having a little bit of variety of men to defend Fort Port is key, and that's why I have a few different units to go through. I have around a dozen different knights as well as archers, and between the spearmen and the men at arms, I have about 30. Adding everything up, including specialty units like siege engineers and scouts, I have, if I did my math right, 98 or 99 military members in my Black Falcon army. And if we really average down the cost of each minifigure, that's about six bucks per dude, which is uh, almost $600. If you don't think that the price of the individual minifigure should have counted towards the grand total, then I have some good news for you. 